Good afternoon. Uh, welcome um, to IntelliJ Idea Tips and Tricks. My name is Marit van Dijk. I'm from the Netherlands uh, and I'm a developer advocate at JetBrains. Um, so I know that some of us are very passionate about using either a dark or a light theme. Uh, and I'll be on it. Who, who, who uses light theme? Okay, a few of you. Who uses dark theme? Awesome. Okay. So personally, I also prefer a uh, dark theme, especially if I'm in front of my monitor. Uh, but light theme is actually easier to see if you're presenting in a room. So I am going to switch to a uh, light theme. So we have a regular light theme, light theme with a light header. Uh, we have a high contrast theme, which can be useful if you're in a really dark room or if you have a visual impairment. Uh, we have uh, Darkula, and if that's not enough, you can get more themes from uh, the marketplace. Um, so like I said, you can use the, I'm going to switch to light theme. You can use the arrows in this menu to uh, change between the options and then enter to select, or you can press the number. So I'm going to press three for light theme with light header. Um, and in the same switcher, we can also switch other uh, stuff, uh, customize our IDE a little bit, or change, for example, uh, the view mode. So we could go to presenter mode um, if we want to. Um, or actually, I just prefer to uh, use the zoom. So I could zoom in more uh, or less. Are you okay in the back? Is this big enough for you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so what I really like about IntelliJ IDEA is that uh, I don't have to customize it. It comes with uh, lots of bundled plugins and functionality uh, that I need as a Java developer. But if I want to, I can customize it. Um, for example, um, I can customize the color uh, that I use here or I can set a custom uh, project icon, which obviously I've set to the IntelliJ IDEA logo because that's fun. Um, and today I'd like to show you mostly some uh, existing functionality that uh, probably some of it you're already familiar with, but hopefully I'll show you also some stuff that maybe you're not familiar with. Um, so um, we're gonna write some code. Uh, also, one more thing I wanted to show you is if you use shift shift search everywhere, you can search your code, but also um, settings and functionality and basically everywhere. Uh, so one of the things that we can do, uh, some people like to turn off their tabs. So we can go tab placement none. And we can set that straight from here. Um, obviously, if you have no tabs, how would you navigate? We can use uh, recent files to navigate to, as said, recent files. If we use it again, it will show us only the edited files. Uh, some shortcuts, if you use them multiple times in a row, you get a different subset uh, of that same functionality. And we can also use recent files to navigate to windows. Some of the windows have their own shortcut. Um, and I tend to generally use those if I know them. Um, but if you don't know them or there are windows that don't have a shortcut, like um, AI Assistant, then you can also um, access those windows from here. And you can search for the windows uh, to narrow down uh, the options. So we'll go to main and write some code today. Um, so obviously when we have a Java application, we need to start with a public static void main. Uh, this is generated by uh, a new feature called full line code completion, which runs locally on your machine. So it doesn't call our service. It doesn't send your code away. Um, and in this case, we could uh, tab to accept uh, public static void main. But there are other ways that we can uh, write public static void main. We could use regular completion, or we could use live templates like PSVM. And if we enter, that uh, short template will expand to uh, the full code. I see someone nodding in the front row, you use this. Uh, alternatively, we can also type main, which will do the same thing. Um, 
we have uh, a lot of uh, predefined live templates. You can pull up a list of the live templates and you can actually search uh, that list for whatever you're looking for. Uh, and you can also create your own, as I'll show you later. Um, so we'll write some code that reads a bunch of lines from a file and then uh, print out those lines that we've, um, that we've read. And we will use a buffered reader to do so. We can use camel casing in uh, code completion. So I just type BR for buffered reader. And it will show up. We will need to uh, give our variable a name. And IntelliJ IDEA will suggest names based on the technical context. So in this case, reader and buffered reader. Uh, and if you're using JetBrains AI Assistant, uh, you will also get AI-generated names uh, that might be based on more than just the technical context, but also, for example, um, if you have a list of strings, whatever is in those strings. Like if you have a list of strings that are types of dinosaurs, uh, AI Assistant might suggest dinosaur names as a name for that list. Um, but I've turned off AI Assistant so it doesn't get in the way of showing you regular completion. Uh, for now. Uh, so we want a new buffered reader using a new file reader, new file, and my file is called lines.txt. So as you can see, we have some red squigglies, meaning our code currently doesn't compile. We can fix that with Alt-Enter, but first we need to go to the location where uh, our error is. And we can do so using F2 to go to the next error. Or if we have multiple errors in our file, we can use Shift F2 to go back to the previous error. So now we can use Alt-Enter to see how we can fix this. And we get a preview of uh, what will happen if we select this option. So we'll add um, throws file, no file not found exception for this checked exception. Once we fixed all, of the er fixed all of the errors in the file, we can use F2 to cycle through the warnings in the file, like this new file we don't actually need. So once we read all of the lines, we'll want to assign them to a collection. Um, for example, an array list. And we'll want to assign that array list to a variable. Uh, we can go back. Uh, to the beginning of the line and, and declare that variable. Or we can use a refactoring and extract variable to assign it to a variable. Um, as you might notice, there's a little cog wheel there, which, which gives you more options. And also here, IntelliJ hints that there are additional options that we can use here. So if we use the shortcut that's provided, we see that we can also add options to declare this as final or as a var. Um, we can use our mouse to click the checkboxes, but I prefer not to. If we click the option key on uh, Mac, we see that the F and the V are underlined. I don't know if you can tell all the way in the back, but if not, please trust me. Um, and that means that we can use the F to select final or the V or to, to select var. Um, Unfortunately, somehow this changes the type that was declared. So if we want to go back and change that to a list, we can use Shift tab to go back to the uh, type that's declared and say that we want a list. And yes, we want to declare a string line. Thank you, full line code completion. Um, and we will read the lines, line. And if you know the uh, API of buffered reader, you'll know that we want to use read line. And we can type r.r to find reader.readline in the code completion. And we'll want to read them while they are not null. Um, and if you see here, um, the exclamation mark equals changed into the not equal sign. That's because I'm using a font with ligatures and I have enabled ligatures. Uh, so if you're using a font that has ligatures, you can enable them and uh, make your code look prettier. Um, and I know I'm a back-end developer, so I don't really care about pretty, but I like this feature. Um, and I'm using JetBrains Mono font. Uh, so if you have a font that has ligatures like these here, and you enable them, this will show up in your code editor. 
And if you have a font that doesn't have ligatures, it will just show the ASCII characters. Let's complete that statement as well. We'll want to add the lines to uh, the list of strings that we've created. And we'll also want to make sure that we don't read any of the blank lines. So we want to surround this with an if statement. Uh, so here again, we have a list. We can uh, use arrow keys to select them or just type the number. So I'll type one for if. For if. Um, and if line is not blank, um, here again, I can select from the, from the list and then go back and add an exclamation mark. Or I can type an exclamation mark now and that will negate the statement, uh, the Boolean statement. So if line is not blank, add to uh, the list of strings. And we'll close the reader at the end. Oh, wait, I forgot. We have um, an error there, so we can use Shift F2 to go back and change the method signature to say throws IO exception and close the reader at the end. So now we have an array list of strings that we read from the file. We might want to do something with those strings. Uh, one thing we often have to do is change one type of collection to another type of collection or change a collection to an array or back again. Uh, there's a live template to change a collection to an array. Um, and we can, ex again, assign that to a variable using uh, the refactoring, extract variable, or we can use postfix completion, which is a kind of live template that you can apply to a statement. And we can type dot var uh, to assign this to a variable. If we want to do it the other way around, we could declare the string array uh, first. and use type safe completion, which will assign a value of the right type. In this case, the only string array that we have are the arguments uh, from the top. Uh, so it will assign those to this variable. And as mentioned before, we can use the same uh, shortcut to uh, multiple times in a row to get slightly different uh, behavior. So if we use this twice, we get additional options of things that we could assign to this variable. Bless you. Or if we use it three times, we get even more options um, that we can assign to this variable. Uh, this is not what I want to do here. So instead, let's iterate over the list of uh, variables that we've read from, or over the list of strings that we've read from the file and we can print them to system out. There's a live template for that, of course. So we can print the string. Um, you might have noticed there are other um, live templates that print stuff to uh, system out. For example, we can also print a, value, uh, a variable. Uh, and if we change the variable here, then the string associated is also changed. And there are other um, ways to print out stuff, like print out the name of the method or the method and the parameter names. So this way you can uh, print relevant information. As promised, we can also create our own live templates. Um, look for save as live template. Um, I just practiced my demo earlier today, so let me get rid of that one. So we will give it a name and a description that we can search for in the list of uh, live templates. We can define variables name in the live template, so that's that will show up as a place for your cursor to put the name for uh, the thing that you're declaring. We can say where we want the cursor to end up after using this uh, live template. Uh, 
and we can say what we want to do here. Uh, so we want to perform a command, and we can edit the variables to say, for example, the command should be an expression, and it should be a statement completion. So now when we apply this um, live template that we've just created, the cursor shows up to uh, give it a name. Then it goes to the next place where we need to put a variable which is uh, a complete, uh, co to complete the statement. So we could, for example, return. And now we've used uh, our custom live template. Let's see that we have some working code. So let's run the code. We see that we have uh, written some code that reads lines from, uh, from the file and then prints them to system out. But are we happy with this code? It works. It's not necessarily very concise. So let's see if IntelliJ IDEA has some suggestions on how we might improve this code. For example, we could collapse the for loop with a for each. We can do something similar to the while. We can use a stream. Notice that the collect is uh, highlighted, so we can press F2 and see what IntelliJ suggests here. We can use to list. For the buffered reader, we can use a surround try surround try with resources. Notice that I can move arrow up to go to the bottom of the list or arrow down to go to the uh, top of the list. And that goes for most of the lists, so also for completion, so you can navigate more easily. Um, we don't need reader close anymore. And let's say we want to extract a method here to read lines from file. Typing and talking is harder than you'd expect. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, now we've extracted this method. We can clean this up some more. Let's say we return here. We no longer need this. Oh. Or this. Much more concise, am I right? So we've used IntelliJ IDEA with some suggestions to uh, change basically the shape of the code to make it more, I don't know, this decade, I guess. Um, let's see if it still works. Yep, cool. So let me think. What if we had multiple filters? Let me duplicate this. Oh, in the right place. And change the uh, filters that we're using. So let's say if it doesn't start with A and length is longer than three. So now we have multiple filters that we are applying to our list of strings. Um, if we wanted to debug this, we can add a breakpoint and run it through the debugger. Notice that we get uh, extra breakpoints for the lambdas on this line. Um, but if we run through this, it will show us the, the values of our variables at certain times in the, as we're running through the code. And it might be nice to actually see what happens in the filtering. Um, hang on, sorry. Let me try that again. We can use trace current st uh, stream chain to see what happens in each of the filters. So first we have our list of lines that we read, then we filter them for the ones that aren't blank, 
Then we filter them for the ones that don't start with A, and then we filter them for the length, and we end up with our uh, list of uh, strings. So here we can visualize actually what is happening in our transformations and our filters. Uh, or we can use the flat mode to see what happens. If you're not presenting and you have your proper screen, you can actually see what's going on here. So that's a much easier way to look at debugging uh, a chain of filters. Let me remove the breakpoint again. Um, having this code with multiple filters on one line is not necessarily easy to read, so let's see if we can fix that. We can select all occurrences of filter, and now we have multiple carrots that we can use to place all of the filters below each other, making it easier to read and easier to see uh, the different actions that we have. And now we can also add additional transformations like a map to create, for example, a new user. Or we can use method reference. And we can also map that back to string. Uh, so we can add transformations. And now you see that uh, IntelliJ IDEA provides inlay hints here on what the type of each uh, line is, which is another reason you might want to have them one below another. Um, if it doesn't give you type information, that is something that you can actually pull up. Uh, so you can ask for the type information of a particular statement. Uh, which can be helpful if you're trying to read and understand code. And as we, as we all know, we spend more time reading and understanding code than we do writing code. Uh, I have a whole talk on that showing lots of features uh, that you can find online. Um, another really useful uh, way to pull up some information is, for example, to use quick documentation so that you can pull up the documentation for a class rather than navigate to that class and end up getting lost in a, in a larger code base. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, reading code or writing code uh, with IntelliJ IDEA and using some of the debugger features. There are way more debugger features. Um, and the point of this uh, talk was, of course, not to uh, teach you shortcuts, but if you do want to learn shortcuts, there is a plugin that you can use. called um, Key Promoter X. Has anybody used this? Do you like using it? Yeah? <laughs> so, so. I, I like that it tells me that there is a shortcut and what the shortcut is. Uh, although, as I, as I mentioned, you can also find them in the UI uh, in many places. Um, but I felt really bad after, you know, it told me, you have pressed the run button for the 800th time. Uh, so I uninstalled this, but, you know, mileage may vary. It's a way that you can um, learn uh, features. Uh, one of my favorite shortcuts is find action, because you can find any action. So if you know that the, f that the functionality exists, but you don't remember the shortcut, uh, you can uh, use find action to find it. Uh, and, for example, we have um, a feature trainer that is included in IntelliJ IDEA. Um, so if you're newer to IntelliJ IDEA, or even if you've been using it for a while, I guarantee that you'll learn something new if you go through the feature trainer. Uh, I know I did. Um, and with that, I'm almost at time. Nice. Um, if you want more information, documentation, uh, the blog, if you want to know more about our new releases and new features, guide for tutorial and tips, YouTube for videos, like and subscribe, thanks. And uh, Twitter for, um, I can almost say it with a straight face, like and subscribe. Um, and Twitter for tips and announcements and whatnot. Or uh, if you want to connect, you can go to my website and all of my socials are there. Thank you. I think we don't have any, another slot afterward, right? So I think we can still take a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have anything afterward. So is it okay? Yeah. If you have if you have some questions, I think you have a few minutes extra that we can use. 
I didn't expect that many questions for something so technical, but uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, th thank you for the presentation. You're uh, welcome. Just, I, I would like if the maturity level of those tricks and the completion are similar in your other IDE, such as PyCharm or Goland. Yes, yes. So the I think everything I showed you today should be the same or very similar in our other IDEs like WebStorm, PyCharm, Goland, CLion, RubyMine. Uh, the only one that is different is Fleet, which is our new code editor, mm -hmm. uh, and that has a whole new front end and also new shortcuts. Okay, thank you. So if you're switching between IDEs, all of this stuff should work the same or similar, apart, of course, from the Java-specific stuff. That's an interesting point. Uh, sh if we start today using your, tool sh your tools, uh, should we start evaluating Fleet? Because it's is it something strategically that should at some point become your flagship or not? Um, it's not intended to replace our current IDEs. Okay. Um, and personally, I use IntelliJ IDEA for pretty much everything, but I only use JVM languages. So um, it works for Java and Kotlin. I've also used it for Groovy and Scala in the past, mm -hmm. um, only when I had to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not my favorite languages, but, uh, but I've worked on projects that, that use those. So. Uh, but if you're using multiple languages, if you're switching between uh, different languages, then yes, please do try it and please do let us know what you think. Uh, or if you're doing mobile development and using Kotlin multi-platform, where um, Fleet is the go-to editor for Kotlin multi-platform. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ben. You're very welcome. Uh, I did bring some stickers and I specifically brought some shortcut stickers. So we have it's on theme, sorry, I look ugly now. Okay, I'll go away. Um, so we have uh, the Windows and Linux shortcuts and the uh, Mac shortcuts, and we have dark and light theme. And yes, the dark theme are going faster. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.